Muy bienvenidos, queridos amigos. ¿Cómo andan? Perfectamente bien, ¿no? ¿Ustedes qué hicieron la semana pasada? ¿Han practicado los ejercicios bien? Ustedes han aprendido los pasados, el perfecto, el indefinido, ¿verdad? Estoy segura que ya tienen bastante confianza. Ahora ustedes pueden hablar, leer y escribir bastante bien en español, ¿verdad? ¿Les gusta practicar español? Estoy segura que ustedes son bastante sinceros e inteligentes. I'm sure, friends, you could understand all that I said now. I'm also sure you're practicing your lessons regularly and doing the exercises given in the lessons. In the last few classes, we have been learning the past tenses in Spanish. Can you tell me which past tense do you use to talk of something that happened this week? Perfecto. O indefinido. Yes, it is perfecto. And indefinido is used to talk about events that are completed in the past. Like last week, last year, etc. And we have seen several situations where these tenses were used. Here are some situations wherein both pasados, that is indefinido and as well as perfecto are being used. Let us look at them. ¿Has dicho mentiras alguna vez? ¿Has dicho mentiras alguna vez? Sí, dije solo una vez a mi novia. So, you understand, decir mentiras is to lie. So, somebody asks you, ¿Has dicho mentiras alguna vez? And this person, for example, was asked and he replied saying, Sí, dije solo una vez a mi novia. I hope you followed that. ¿Has escrito poemas? ¿Has escrito poemas? No. No he escrito hasta ahora. Hasta ahora no he escrito. If you haven't written so far. Or if you want to say you have written. Si sí, escribí una vez a mi amante. Yes, I wrote once for my lover. The third situation is. Sabes. Ana tuvo un accidente ayer. ¿Sabes? Ana tuvo un accidente ayer. Sí, no me digas. ¿Es algo grave? Afortunadamente no es grave y ella está bien ahora. Menos mal. Another situation could be, anoche me acosté tarde, pero esta mañana me he levantado temprano. Anoche me acosté tarde. So, you remember with anoche, you always use indefinido. And esta mañana me he levantado temprano. If you look at these micro conversations, you can see both the pasados. Perfecto as well as indefinido in the sentence. Since anoche is... In indefinido, you know very well, you have, you can have perfecto with esta noche. So, you have used both the tenses of pasados within a situation. That is terminado, tiempo terminado, indefinido, in case of ayer, una vez, o hace, as explained to you before. We use indefinido, alguna vez, todavía, you use perfecto. You can listen to a song by Gloria Estefan on the pasados if you like. She describes pasados very well in her song and it is available in the YouTube. Mm -hmm. 
You know the expression I in Spanish, isn't it? Hay clase de español hoy. Hay clase de español. Is there a class? Or in an affirmative sentence like Hay clase de español hoy. Yes, there is a Spanish class today. You know how to use it in perfecto? Ha habido. Since the verb is haber, yes, it is the same verb which works as auxiliary for the perfecto. Ha habido clase esta mañana. Ha habido significa there has been class this morning. Ayer no hubo clase porque la profe estuvo de permiso. Ayer no hubo. Yesterday there was no class. The class didn't happen in the sense since the teacher was on leave. We shall quickly look at the different temporal expressions with these pasados. Hoy, esta mañana, este verano, durante este curso, durante estas clases, etc. You use perfecto. And with ayer, entonces, or aquel día, el otro día, etc. You use the indefinido. To practice more of pasados, you should slowly start reading newspapers or literary texts in Spanish and you will find them very interesting and you will slowly gain confidence. ¿Está bien? Muy bien. Let us now look at another text. Listen to it carefully. Yo nací en un pueblo pequeño. Mis padres eran campesinos. Trabajaban en un campo de un hacendado. Ellos trabajaban en los campos de cañas de azúcar. No ganaban mucho dinero y por lo tanto no podían enviarme al cole. Yo pasaba todo el día por las calles, cuando mis padres trabajaban en el campo. Así era mi niñez. I'm sure you followed quite a bit about the text. Nací en un pueblo pequeño. Is the verb nacer. In this context, it is an indefinido, right? Since it is an ER ending verb, yo is conjugated as nasi. Nasi, I was born in a small village. The other tenses of the verbs must be really puzzling you. What are the verbs in this text? The other verbs are Mis padres eran campesinos. Trabajaban en campos de un hacendado, en los campos de cañas de azúcar, no ganaban mucho dinero, no podían enviarme al cole, yo pasaba todo el día por las calles, así era mi niñez. From these sentences, you know that the verbs trabajar, ganar, poder, pasar appeared in the text and they are conjugated neither in the present nor any of the pasados that you have learned so far. That is neither perfecto nor indefinido. Let us now look at it, what they mean. I was born in a small village. Mis padres eran campesinos. My parents were farmers. Trabajaban en campos de un hacendado. They used to work in the fields of an estate owner. No ganaban mucho dinero. They were not earning a lot of money. Por lo tanto, no podían enviarme al colegio. And that's why they couldn't send me to the school. Yo 
pasaba todo el día por las calles cuando mis padres trabajaban en el campo. I used to spend all my time in the streets while my parents were working in the fields. That was my childhood. Do you notice that the past tense that is being talked about here is different from the perfecto and the indefinido? In what way? In this context, it talks about events that happened over a period of time. For example, my parents used to work in the fields. I was not going to school. They were not earning enough money, etc. Bueno amigos, we continue further our journey with some more of past tenses. The tense that is used in the text we saw now is the imperfecto in Spanish. You have already learned pasado perfecto, pasado indefinido and now it is pasado imperfecto. We will look at some conversations to know how it functions and how it is used. Here is the first one. Sabes una vez que me pasó? Dime, dime. Estaba en una tienda y no tenía dinero porque llevaba otro bolso. ¿De verdad? Pues nunca me pasó esto. Pues nunca me pasó esto. Or another situation. Cuando era joven tenía muchas novias, pero al fin me casé con una chica que me buscaron mis padres. When I was young, I used to have lots of girlfriends, but eventually I married a girl my parents looked for me. In this sentence, you can see that you use imperfecto, era joven, tenía novias, and also the indefinido to talk about an event that happened once. That is, me casé, me buscaron, etc. Let's take another sentence. Cuando estudiaba en la universidad, nunca faltaba clases. Faltar clases is to miss classes. So, when I was studying in the university, I never used to miss classes. Here is another conversation between a teacher and a student. ¿Qué pasó, Pedro? ¿Por qué has llegado tarde? Siento mucho, señora, es que el tráfico estaba de pena. ¿Así? Bueno, está bien. The teacher asked Pedro why he was late and Pedro explained and said, there was lot of traffic. You could use the expression, había mucho tráfico. Hay, that is, you know, there is or there are. Hay mucho tráfico. Había mucho tráfico. ¿Tienes alguna idea de Gar Gabriel García Márquez? Sí, era un gran escritor. Escribía frases muy largas en sus novelas. Or, in other situation where you're describing your abuelo. ¿Te acuerdas de tu abuelo? Yo no me acuerdo nada de mi abuelo. Murió cuando yo era muy pequeño. Sí, sí, me acuerdo muy bien. Se nos murió hace poco. Era un señor bastante alto, muy majo, y me compraba muchos regalos. Y por las noches siempre me relataba cuentos de mitología. Me encantaba mucho. Before we go to the conjugations of the imperfectos, let us first understand from these conversations where it has been used. In the first instance, it is used in the description of people in the past. Descripción de personas, 
Mi abuelo era alto, majo. O, if you want to talk about somebody who was very unfriendly, you will say, era una persona muy antipática. Or you could say, yo estaba muy delgada de niña. In other contexts, it is used to describe events, like describir hechos. Había mucho tráfico en la calle. La policía no estaba. Por eso, todo era muy caótico. Todo era muy caótico. You are describing the situation that there was lot of traffic, the police wasn't around and there was lot of chaos. To express an intention as explained in, in the conversation below. Like for example, you, somebody is picking up the phone and says, Si, sí. hola Paco, soy Marta. Hombre, ahora mismo iba a llamarte. ¿Qué tal? Now, here, iba a llamarte, or that is, I was going to call you. You can use the similar situations like, iba a verte, I was going to see you, iba a decirte, etc. You also use imperfecto to talk about situations in which something happens, like for example, era todo oscuro y de repente oí algo extraño. It was dark and suddenly I heard a strange voice. Normally in these situations you narrate two continuous actions like Cuando yo estudiaba, mi madre veía la tele. De joven, Siempre cuando me duchaba, cantaba en el baño. Or it could be a description of something and then suddenly something happens. In that case, to describe you use the imperfect and to talk about the sudden event you use the indefinido. As in, cuando veía la tele, alguien llamó a la puerta. Or, Cuando dormía, mi hijo puso la radio en volumen alto. Dormía, dormir, yes. Dormía is conjugated in imperfecto. Mi hijo puso la radio en volumen alto. Mi hijo puso, puso. You remember in the last class we did poner in indefinido. Puso, yes. He put on the radio in high volume. The time markers that you use to talk about imperfecto are cuando, entonces, antes, or de, with, de joven, de niño, de pequeño, etc. I hope you are able to slowly understand how the imperfecto is used to talk about descriptions in the past and to talk about something that happened several times or habitual in the past. Having learnt the usage, now let us see how it is conjugated. The conjugation of imperfecto is not very complicated as we saw it in indefinido which is a little complicated. Now for AR ending verbs. You must have noticed in trabajaba, pasaba, ganaba, relataba, etc. You have to remove the ending R and add aba for yo, yo compraba, tu comprabas, él, ella, usted compraba, nosotros comprabamos. Vosotros comprabais, ellos, ellas, ustedes compraban. So, therefore, it is aba, abas, aba, abamos, abais, aban. 
Similarly, you can conjugate any AR ending verb, either regular or irregular. Even estar also follows this pattern and the endings are same as any AR ending verb estaba, estabas, estaba, estabamos, estabais, estaban. Remember that abamos always carries accent. Nosotros, abamos, always carries an accent on a. Pensar, for example, is an irregular verb, right? You remember the present tense is pienso, piensas, but in imperfecto, it is just pensaba, pensabas, pensaba, and pensábamos, pensabais, pensaban, or even any reflexive verb, ar ending, like sentarse will be conjugated as me sentaba, te sentabas, se sentaba, etc. Or for example, you take a sentence like me sentaba en un banco y miraba hacia el mar. Cuando empezó a llover. This is the verb sentarse, which is to sit. That is when I was sitting on a bench and looking towards the sea, it started raining. Practice the AR ending verbs given in the lesson. The ER and IR ending verbs are conjugated alike. That is, you remove the ER, that is the ER or IR, IR, and add IA, IAS, IA, IAMOS, IAIS, IAN, COMIA, VIVIA, Tenía, decía. So even the irregular verbs, ponía, podía, all take the same endings. The irregular, for example, is ser. Ser is era. Eras, era, eramos, erais, eran. So you say, yo soy profesora, yo era profesora. Have you noticed one very interesting thing while learning these conjugations? The yo and the el have the same conjugation. Yo tenía, el tenía. The first and the third person singular are the same. So depending on the context, one can interpret it whether it is referring to the first person or the third person. So I am sure now you are confident with the pasados, almost we have done all the three pasados by now. Practice them. One best way of doing it is comparing something between antes and ahora. Antes, earlier and now. Antes, mi ciudad no era así. Pero ahora es. You begin like that. You conjugate several verbs, compare it and see how well you can frame sentences with imperfecto. So that's all for today. More to come, more exciting things, I'm sure, because we are going to do a lot of culture component in the lessons hereafter. So enjoy learning Spanish. Ya está. Adios amigos. Suerte. Ciao.